Hello everyone, today we're here with the 1973 Plymouth Barracuda. This car was actually my first car and I still have it. I've had it for 30 years. So let's take a little tour of it. It's been restored. It was restored in the late 90s. 1996 or so and um, other than that I've pretty much just kept it since then um, when I received the vehicle it had the full wheel covers I put the uh, rally wheels on a long time ago they're not appropriate or, or sorry they're appropriate for the car but they're not stock uh, let's put it that way this originally was a non-stripe car when we did the restoration, um, I added the stripe. It's, this, it's the original color. It's uh, JY3 1973 Honey Gold. It's got 60,000 miles, 60,600 miles. When I received the vehicle, it had 47,000 miles. So. In 30 years, I put about 13,000 miles on it. There's some parts of the interior that are original. Uh, back seat covers all original. I added rear defrost. The uh, rear package tray is a restoration piece. These uh, rear covers here, they're original. Door panels are original. Um, the dash is original. The front seats have been recovered. Consoles original, steering wheels original, all the dash. Um, I did add an AM FM radio. It, it didn't have an AM FM radio originally. Uh, this particular model does not have the rally dash. It's just a standard um, dash. It did not have a clock. I made a I made a bracket years ago to mount the SunTac, a vintage SunTac in there, and the bracket uh, bolts to the uh, instrument panel lighting and it could be removed at any time and there would be no trace left that that was there. It's a little bit gaudy under there, but uh, it does the job. It's got the slapstick shifter as most of these E-bodies would have from the era. So if you're not familiar with the slapstick shifter, you know, if you wanted to do a little bit of racing and actually manually shift the car when you put it down into one, you could just bump it up. It ratchets into two, it stops, let it off, ratchets into D, stops, and then you can't go any further. If you want to go into neutral, you just release it and put it like that. Um, most of these shifters of this style in this era, when you put them down in one, if you went and pushed it all the way up, it would just go all the way directly to neutral, but this one's got the Mopar slapstick, which again is really common on these automatics, these E-bodies. Uh, this is a no air conditioning car. So you got your vents here. All right, the typical sort of mid to late 70s, sorry, mid to early 70s Mopars. Uh, you know, the A-bodies had the doors down there that you had to reach and get to. The e bodies are a little more refined in that aspect and similar to the b bodies where they had the cable operated vents and of course they're the crotch blaster type here's your hvac control it's just very simple um, heat off and the frost there with your three sorry two speed fan like i said i i added the rear defroster it wasn't original to the car and it's got the console uh, sun visors original, headliners original. The uh, additional shoulder belt, you know, these came in oh, probably 1967, 68, and 73 was the last year for them. So, one of the ways you can easily identify a uh, 73 Barracuda versus a 74 is just look at the shoulder belts. If it's got the uh, tuck away roof mounted ones it's could be a 72 or 3 uh, if it's got the big retractable uh, setup that was the last year that they made these cars that would have been 74 
let's see what else we'll take a look under the hood all the glass is original might not be that easy to see here with the sun today but uh, yeah it's got the original 318 I put a fuel pump on it years ago water pump other than cleaning the carbon out of the crossovers and the intake I've never had the engine opened or apart it's got a newer master cylinder um, and when we did the restoration on this car I was really young at the time um, we didn't go with a full detail under here and it's been driven it sits most of the year it's it's a good car cruise car it's good for um, going and taking the family and getting some ice cream stuff like that it's just a fun vehicle it's by no means fast um, I recently did a few upgrades to it the lower control arm bushings were getting really squeaky so I replaced those and um, found out that the rubber on the one side was just totally gone so it was metal on metal and then when I put it back together of course the alignment was way off so I just redid the alignment uh, a month or so ago and it it feels a lot better than it used to I aligned it to probably different specs than the shop did I, I'm getting into the point now where I don't take these cars to the alignment shop I just do it on my own anyway the engines uh, all original other than maybe doing some recurve springs in the distributor it's got the two barrel carburetor no headers no dual exhaust you know a lot of these cars back in the day um, they were hot rodded really quick after being a secondhand vehicle or maybe even after being a trade-in in the mid 70s late 70s this one um, was never hot rodded so it, it's even though it's been restored it's fairly original and again it's not a perfect car it's it's a driver but we tried to uh, we tried to keep some of the original features of the car during the restoration you know we cut in the jams and we tried to keep all of the rubber uh, stuff very nice and, and again it's not a con concord restoration by any means but it's a nice nice driver nice cruise car to take out and about with the family let's take a look in the trunk So I put that sticker on there years and years ago. Um, that's the original rear bumper. It was a little crumpled up and the bumper shop straightened it out, but there were some work marks, tool marks there. And I put the uh, Petty sticker on just to kind of cover that up. You know, all these are original. They're, they're not perfect because um, when I did get the vehicle, Although structurally it was all sound, we did put quarter panels on it um, and redid some of the fenders. But it's got the original trunk mat, and there's not a lot of space in these trunks, you know. Um, you're lucky if you could get a shade 10 in for a car show and a few chairs and maybe a cooler. Uh, you're not putting a lot of stuff in, in these particular trunks. They're a little bit more like a sports car in that regard. And again, this one's the Barracuda model, not a Cuda. Uh, the Cudas have a lot more trim going on to them. They've got bright work around here. They've got black or gray on the tail panel. Uh, this doesn't have any of that. It's just a Barracuda. And um, it's the basic 318. I, I don't believe you could have gotten a Slant 6 in 73 with these cars. I think 72 would have been the last year for the Slant 6s on these. You know, they've got the offset key. Uh, some, somewhat like the 71 Furies would have had and there's a linkage that goes over to here and operates the trunk lever there I put a trunk light in here this trunk lights like off of a 78 Newport it bolts right on um, really easy to wire in I put some small stuff on there this particular car has the single exhaust on the passenger side it's got cutouts for duels uh, and I never put the uh, the exhaust tips that come through the valance I never changed the valance or anything like that um, I recently redid the muffler I've got one of these reproduction mufflers 
Uh, FYI, if you have an e-body and you try to get a muffler off Rock Auto, it doesn't fit. It's wrong. I tried that and it uh, just did not work. It's got the eight and three quarter rear end. It's got uh, 727 transmission. It's got a 323 ratio. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the tour of it. And again, this was the first vehicle that I owned. And like I said, I still have it. Took the driver's test in it years ago and uh, we'll go for a drive. We'll try to see how it runs. Okay, so we're gonna go for a drive here. But before we do, I uh, just wanna demonstrate what the key in buzzer sounds like and the seatbelt buzzer. So I disabled the seatbelt buzzer and if you've never driven one of these original 72, 73 cars, they did this thing where if you didn't have your seatbelt fastened, there's a light that comes on back here. You can't see the light anymore because I, I have the tack in place there. But if I took my seatbelt off, which I have it on, but if I took it off and started the car up, that light would come on and also a buzzer would come on. And when I worked at the used car lot as a kid, the, uh, the mid 70s cars, they, they were about 20, 25 years old when they would come through. And sometimes we would get these big Oldsmobiles come through and the seat belts would be knotted up. They would be tied together to keep that fastened belts light and buzzer off. And um, my light still works, but like I said, you can't see it. Um, and it's, I unplugged the buzzer. It's under the dash there somewhere. I think it's a separate buzzer from the key reminder buzzer. But uh, if you wear your seatbelt, it's not a big deal. All right, so let's go for a little drive here. All right, we'll get a little impression here of what the car's like in driving. I apologize that we might have the sun in our face a little bit, but I might be driving west here. Since I redid the alignment, Like I said, I don't know what the initial specs were. I just know they were way out. I had all kinds of positive camber after redoing the, uh, the lower control arm bushings. And this car used the handle pretty bad with stock torsion bar, stock rate torsion bars, no front sway bar. I mean, it's got disc brakes. I guess some of these good still in 73 have had drum brakes. This one has discs. Uh, they're manual. It has only, only mechanical option it really has is power steering and automatic transmission. But uh, the manual brakes work really good. They're the Chrysler. They're not the slider calipers. They've got the two pins. So it handles a lot better than it used to, but it's still nowhere near like a modern car. over the years. 
years, I've, on, I've done about 13,000 miles of that stuff. We've got some beautiful colors here this time of year. It's middle October. Leaves are changing. Afternoons are nice and warm this week. Perfect for a little afternoon drive. A lot of motorcycles are out. A lot of other uh, classic cars, antique cars, roadsters, Fiat's, Miatas, all that kind of stuff. I've seen a lot of it today. People are enjoying the last few days here before we get into November. Beautiful colors.